Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we are gonna make some delicious, buttery toffee, right in the Ninja Fruity. Now, how we're gonna make this? Super simple, really fast, and then we put it into a bar pan and let it cool down, and it's just like a score or a Heath bar. Oh yeah, we're gonna top it with chocolate too. So this is a super easy recipe, and let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the Ninja Foodie. You can use either the stainless steel pot or you can use uh, the ceramic coated. Either one is fine here. You can also do this on the stove. The instructions would be exactly the same or in your instant pot with the sear saute. We have one cup of sugar and one cup or two sticks of butter. Now I use salted butter, but you could use unsalted in this recipe. We do add a little bit of salt um, at the end as well. So either one would be fine. All right, so we're gonna add that in. Now we are gonna put the sear saute on high and let this start to melt. We also have two teaspoons of vanilla, which I'm not gonna use right now, that goes in at the end, and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now, if you were using unsalted butter, you might wanna add in a little bit extra salt, but that's certainly up to you. And we have about a cup to a cup and a half of milk chocolate chips. Now, of course, you could use any type of chocolate that you want, but I think it's pretty traditional on a Heath or a score bar that it's milk chocolate. Um, but you could use dark chocolate if you prefer. All right, so I've got a little bit of oil here. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use that for. And then let's talk about our parchment and our pan that we want to use. So this is a nine by 13 pan. The measurements are nine inches wide from edge to edge and 13 from edge to edge. So really the inside is about eight inches by maybe 11, 11 and a half inches. So any pan that's about this size will work fine. Doesn't have to be this one. This is a bar pan from Pampered Chef. It could certainly be a, a, a metal pan. It could even be a plastic pan. It really, it makes no difference what you use. The, the size of it though does make a difference because this, this amount of ingredients in this size pan gives you the perfect thickness for your toffee. If you used a smaller pan, it's gonna be a lot thicker and it's gonna be a little bit harder to bite and it's just a different experience. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing a pan. Choose one that is as close to the nine by 13 as you can. All right, now I'm gonna line this with parchment paper, but before I do that, I'm just gonna spritz the pan with a little bit of oil here. Not too much, just a little bit. The only reason why I do that, sometimes I'll use butter, you know, uh, but oil's a little bit less expensive, is to have it sit down and stay. That's the only reason why I do that. So then I just spread it out so that it's lining the pan and it, and it just sticks to it a little bit easier. So that's just a little trick there. Then, while this is still heating up, because this, is, this takes the longest part. Once it starts heating and boiling and we start stirring, it goes so super fast. So definitely have your pan ready, have your chocolate chips out, have your vanilla measured, have your salt out, have everything ready to go, because once this starts heating up to the hard crack stage, it is it goes really fast and if you don't pay enough attention, you will burn it. So that's the only thing. You don't even need a thermometer for this recipe. We're gonna go by color. We're gonna go by the looks of it and it turns out perfect every time. All right, so I'm starting to hear a little bit going on here. The butter is starting to melt a little bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and move everything around. So this is you know, similar to the caramel that I make in a few of my recipes, but of course we have this big addition of butter, and that's what gives the toffee that just buttery flavor. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. All right, so all the butter has melted and the sugar is now dissolving and it's starting to boil. Now this is not a recipe that you walk away from. Just constantly stir, it goes really fast. If you have a candy thermometer and you wanna use it, you certainly can. You wanna take it up to the hard crack stage, which is right around 305 or so uh, Fahrenheit. But I found that when I tried to make it with a thermometer, I was so busy trying to get the temperature right that I almost burned it because I, I wasn't paying attention 
to the color and I was just like looking at the thermometer. And I think this recipe, it's easier if you just pay attention to the color. Because now you can see it's a real pale, buttery color. It's going to darken and darken and darken. But it is a fine line between the perfect toffee and burnt sugar. And once it's burnt, you pretty much have to throw it away. There's no, you can't get past that. It really doesn't taste very good. All right, you can see here now that our mixture is changing. It's actually lightening up, right? Well, it'll do that just for a minute before it starts to darken. We're also getting much bigger bubbles on the top. That is exactly what we want, so just keep stirring. It smells so good. All right, I'm starting to see a little bit of change in the color. It's very subtle right now. Darken up some, some more now, but we're still not there yet. And I'm starting to see some really dark parts on the bottom. It's darkening up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi off. So that's about the color that we want. Now we want to quickly add in our vanilla and our salt. And give it another stir here. You can take it a little bit darker too if you want. The darker it gets, the harder it's gonna be. So this is about the um, color that I like to stop it at. It is, oh gosh, like a lightened coffee color probably. Like if you put some cream. In some coffee. All right, that looks so good. But you can take it a little bit further too. You just have to stir constantly. All right, so we're going to get that out. And you can see right here, right on the top here, there's a darker spot right here. That's where it was sitting on the bottom. And you could take it all to that color if you wanted. I just always get nervous that I'm going to burn it. And I don't want to go through all this and then burn my toffee. So I take it off when it's this color. It, it will be... Um, well, you'll see when I taste it, but it will be like, you can crunch it, it will bite through cleanly, it's wonderful. There's just a slight chew, but not too much. It's really delicious. And sorry you can't see exactly what I'm doing, I've gotta do this pretty quickly, and my paper's a little bit high, but you'll, you'll see, I'll turn it around just a second. So I'm just spreading it over the pan before it starts to cool too much to get it kind of even. That's the one thing about candy is it's a quick process. You gotta work fast. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna put on the chocolate chip. So here, I'll turn it around. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just gonna just put them on. Now there's another way you could do this. You could let it cool a little bit um, until you could cut it. And you could actually make little bars, but this is just so much easier in my opinion. And then I just break it up and put it on a tray for people to snack on. All right, now we're gonna put the foil on. That is gonna trap in the heat and melt that chocolate. So we're just gonna put the foil on and let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I'll take my offset spatula here and smooth it over, and then it goes into the refrigerator for two hours. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and hopefully the chocolate has melted enough. It's not going to look like it's melted at all, though, just so you know. When you pull it off, you're like, oh, it's not even ready, but it, it will spread. And sometimes you need to do it a little bit, leave it there a little bit longer, but hopefully this will work. So then spread the chocolate over top. See how as I mash it down, it's spreading? 
and try to get it evenly. You could make little cute designs if you wanted, but I don't usually worry. I just try to get it evenly spread over. Now I'm putting a little bit more of ch more chocolate on than I did in yesterday's batch. So this will be thicker. So when I, when I show you the one that I'm gonna uh, taste for you, it uh, won't have as much chocolate on it as this one does. Which I kind of like the th just a thin, thin layer because you really get the buttery flavor without too much of the chocolate. All right, this is going pretty well. All right, there we go. So we are all done. This is what it looks like. And now it can go in the refrigerator for about two hours. Now, I said to you before that you could do something uh, with it before you put the chocolate on, let's say you wanted to make individual dipped type of toffee. You can do that. Let it cool just a few minutes. Don't put your chocolate on top. Let it cool about five or 10 minutes and then lift the parchment with the toffee out onto the cutting board. And it is right now, let me just grab a little knife and I'll do it, even though I'll get chocolate all over it. It'll be fine. So you can still cut it at this point. So let's say you wanted to make little squares. You can cut through the toffee at this point, dip it in the chocolate, let it set up and cool, and then you'll have little like toffee bars. All right, let's go ahead and taste this right now, right? Let's see, it cut really nice. It should be, oh, it looks beautiful on the inside. Well, it's gonna be chewy. Mm -hmm. So it's still a little chewy. Oh, it's so good though. Oh my gosh, so good, messy. And chewy. As it sets up, it's gonna get crunchier, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Oh my gosh, this is so good. All right, that's for my oil on the bottom. That's fine. So I'm just put that down. I want it to. There we go. Mmm, so good. But you see, I'm still chewing it. All right, so you can see half of this is gone now because um, I didn't eat it all. I mean, I ate some of it, Jeff ate some of it, but I made a toffee coffee ice cream in the Ninja Foodie blender the other night. And I'm still perfecting that recipe, but as soon as it is done, you guys will hear about it because it stands up to the Ben & Jerry's Coffee Heath Bar Crunch ice cream. Trust me, it's delicious. One thing I will say about that is usually like a Heath bar, I think even the score bars, they do have almonds in them. I left that out, but you could certainly add almonds. You would want to crush them up pretty fine. Make sure they're toasted, because that's gonna add a nice flavor. Put them down on your parchment before you pour over your toffee, and then you'll have some nuts in there, and that's fine too. But I decided to leave it without nuts. All right, so you can see now, this is, I made this yesterday, so it is completely, Cool. and now it will just break up. So you could break it up into pieces and serve it. Now it's a little bit wet on the bottom and the reason is, is because I kept it in the refrigerator too long. Once it sets up for two hours, I would take it back out of the refrigerator because the humidity in the refrigerator will melt sugar. All right, so then you just break it up. All right, let's give it a taste. Mm-hmm. It is so good. It is buttery. Mm. Oh my gosh, it is so, so delicious and so easy to make. Oh, it's just simply perfect. So if you are a fan of the score bar or the Heath bar, this recipe is for you. Make up a batch and you are going to love it. Add nuts, don't add nuts, use dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, whatever kind of chocolate you want, or skip the chocolate. As always, make it yours and make it delicious.